Right, well, hello everybody. Thank you so much for coming to this class on 16th century hairstyling and adornment. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to teach this class is because I find that one of the best ways to elevate a costume is to try and emulate the hairstyles of the period. And aside from that, I also find it one of those almost meditative activities before an event or before a big part of an event, say a major court, an elevation, a stepping down, something like that, that helped me to find my centre before going out there in public, wearing a frock for a potentially stressful situation. Uh, along with choosing the right piece of jewellery, I find finding the right hairdo and doing it to be a great way of calming down and centering and finding myself in the event. So over the last 15, 20 years, I've been dressing Spanish as often as I can get away with it and regularly trying to find new ways to dress my hair in distinctly Spanish ways or find new ways to, um, well, bling it well up to quote a friend of mine. So what we are going to look at um, today are some quintessential hairstyles of the period and ways that they are adorned and then there is a brief silent video. The clips were going to be embedded within the um, PowerPoint but unfortunately that proved to be a bandwidth hog so it's taken out and put into a video on YouTube. The link will be given later, um, later on and we can have a look at that and then come back for questions. Um, and then we also look at briefly how to bling up a hairstyle with what you might have on hand. Um, one other thing, um, my hair during the videos looks quite stringy. Uh, this is due to the lovely work of um, Ruth Goodman when she starts talking about Hair care within the Middle Ages. Um, back when I was dancing competitively, my teacher would make us not wash our hair for a week so that it would get a little bit of grease and grime in it and it would be more malleable and hold its positions better. Uh, by following Ruth Goodman's um, advice, I have taken to not washing my hair as often as people would expect. Um, as she describes in How to Be a Tudor, um, adorned to dusk guide to everyday life. She talks about not washing with water, but instead using very fine combs and combing regularly. Um, I found that by using what we tend to call a knit comb these days, that it gets rid of a lot of the scalp flakes, but not all as you'll see in the video, much to my embarrassment. Um, it gets rid of a lot of the grime. Um, my hair doesn't smell. Um, and it takes these sorts of hairstyles and it's secure in a way that newly washed hair is not. I cannot keep my hair over these sorts of um, pads or keep it on a plait, even so onto my hair that will still find a way to slip out when my hair is newly washed. But when it has got a little bit of um, oil and grease that has been distributed through to the ends, um, it stays in place a lot better. Also do keep in mind my hair for these styles is down to my knees when it is out. So um, feel free to use whichever hair pieces you need to recreate any styles because they certainly did in the period. So with that, uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen and bring up the PowerPoint for this class. Oh, recommendations for short haired people. Um, when my hair was a bob, I wore a lot of little balls or coifs just over the back of my head and padded it up with um, sheep's wool because it's light, it's almost the colour of my hair and uh, it adds a nice degree of buff to it without adding any weight. Look, air screen. Oh, um, Jennifer, would you be so kind as to make me a co-host so that I can share my screen? Brilliant, thank you.
here we go. On to the meat of the matter. Uh, this is the first hairstyle that I wanted to look at. This is, of course, um, Isabel Valla. She is Queen of Spain when this portrait is was painted. Uh, this particular version was by Antonio Moro. Um, I do apologise if I mangle names and pronunciations. My um, Spanish language skills are only just beginning, and there's only so much you can learn by a Duolingo, but um, I will give it a go. So what you can see with this particular hairstyle is if you look right at the front of the hairline, there is a distinct, quite small roll um, working back from a centre part, all the way back framing the face down to the ear. Uh, this particular portrait came off Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons. It's not the best version I've seen showing that hairstyle, but you can get a hint of it here. Um, further back from that, we have got just a mass of jewels. We've got, by the looks of it, a filament and perhaps some kind of filled net. And then we've got a lot of height at the back. The question whether that is hat or hair or artistic license, just don't know at the moment. Um, I tend to interpret it as uh, cross plaits quite high on the head, um, potentially augmented with um, some kind of call. But we don't know. We can also see that there are a number of ouches or individual jewels um, added to this whole mess of jewellery up there. So I imagine it must have been quite heavy. So if we move on slightly further, oh, sorry, and we look a couple of years later, we can see this iconic image. We have the same lady. Um, and a very similar shape to her hairstyle. Again, we have a centre part. We can tell that because of that pearl that is coming off the headdress that is sitting just in a slight divot. Then we've definitely got rolls at each temple, but it's hard to tell whether or not they are in fact added or if it is just using her natural volume. Now, what I can tell from various portraits of Isabel Valla is that she appears to have had really quite tightly curled hair, which is lovely. She's got um, natural body in there and it's used to great advantage in her hairstyles. Sadly, my hair's dead straight, so I've got absolutely no way to um, imitate her particular hairstyles, which has always disappointed me hugely. But at least I can imitate her love of jewels on the head. What we can see here is it does appear to me that she has got um, plaits crossed at the top of her head. Whether or not they have been twisted in pearls first before they were laid across, or whether or not a pearl net with huge numbers of ouches has been applied over the top, I don't know. Those ouches could be uh, pins that are applied later, or they could be actually sewn to a structure. We simply don't know because a lot of these portraits don't quite have the detail in the versions that we see online anyway. And my lack of Spanish language means that few resources I've seen, I don't have the ability to translate them enough to get any meaningful information out at this point. So the next style I wanted to look at is the one that is typical of the next Queen of Spain and of Austria. So at this point, if we just zoom in a little bit, you can see that she has got again a centre part. That seems to be a common occurrence across many portraits at this time. Her roles have grown somewhat from the previous fashion. And it's my hypothesis that they are padded. That there is a small crescent roll that her hair is wound around or laid over, could be either, to form the basis of the front part of this hairstyle. The other thing that we tend to see is just at the back behind the ear, there is a bit of bulk there. Now, if I turn my head on the same sort of angle 
you can't see anything in here. If I turn it the other way, you can. So this for me is just one plait wound around my head. This is the thick end. This is the thin end. The shape that I'm seeing in her portrait there reminds me of this side of things. I don't know if you've got me up on the screen as a talking head as well, but I am pointing at my hair trying to show the shape there. In this particular portrait, the back of the hair is not clearly plaited or anything, but it does have texture. And that texture carries on to just in front of the hat under the feather, which makes me think there might be some kind of um, net or call or something under there holding the hair in place and giving an anchor point perhaps for that gorgeous jewel that is draped on her temple. Um, you will actually see that pop up in a couple of other portraits as well, particular jewel. The hat, on the other hand, is a beautiful velvet, um, not quite a flat cap, with again more jewels on it, and that is always a lovely way to adorn a Spanish style hair, um, hairstyle. So if we look at another image of Anne of Austria, we can see this one that is a uh, very different look to the um, the portrait and we can see the same hairstyle but it is modified slightly. The crescents have been angled slightly higher up on the head um, and we don't have a hat. Instead we have another profusion of jewels and bows and who knows what. I suspect this one is a combination of um, filaments and some kind of escoffian or thing that covers the back of the head. Where her hair is, again, the shape or the amount of volume indicates to me that there is definitely something happening behind the rolls, whether it is plaques crossed over or that is just simply structural engineering for a hat, I don't know. I usually try and interpret it as hair and then put things on top of that, but that's again my interpretation. Um, I'm quite keen to learn more if there are out there more interpretations or more understandings of what she's actually wearing. One thing I do find interesting here, at centre front, just behind the jewel, there is quite clearly a wee bow of some description. I'm constantly trying to figure out what she might be tying together there, or whether that's her plaits, or uh, the filaments located in place, who knows but it's quite an intriguing detail. So if we leap forward another few years, we start looking at Isabel Clara Eugenia. And this one, we see no center front part. It is a single roll taken back directly from the face. And that has to be padded. I know in the 90s with hairstyles, we had some really quite impressive shapes to the front of hair like that, but um, personally, I never got it to work. So for me, this says padding. But the bit that I really like about this is directly behind the roll, you can see there are plaits here. Oh, I can't, I can't use my, sorry. Uh, you can see the plaits and they're definitely multiple plaits that are then twisted around each other. And so I've used that as an excuse to um, hide bobby pins or rough sewing in the past when I'm doing my hair. Um, the other thing that I find this portrait is quite tantalizing with is the rough. You will note that it goes up to her ears and then it begins to drop down. And you see that in the tailoring manuals of the time as well, that there's a cutout um, in the back of some collars, not in El Siga, but some of the later ones from what I remember, which is clearly leaving space for the back of the head, but it also leaves space for hair. So whether there's a bun there or there is something else to take the rest of her length of hair, who knows. Again, we have got a jeweled black velvet hat with a small brim and Oh look, it's that same jewel again, but upside down. 
And this is where things start to get weird and beyond my expertise. So again, we have Isabel Clary Eugenia. Um, this one is right at the end of period. And you can see she's wearing this absolutely marvelous tiara. And the hair is, I don't know, where is it? That ruff goes so far up the back of the head. There's no room for a bun to be either at the low or the mid back of the head. It must be up high. Um, is there something up there supporting the tiara? The front of the hair, clearly natural waves. It's drawn back very softly from the head, so it's not uh, from the face. It's not pulled back. Um, very, very different. And then it goes somewhat mad. Um, this here is just a puzzle to me. Um, there's clearly a large amount of structural engineering involved in creating this with the jeweled M and the tiny wee crown on top to the filaments heading down the side is the structural engineering. How much is under the hair? How much is over it? Who knows, but it is a stunning look. And then we go back to this one. Now, the reason I've put this portrait right at the end, despite the fact that it is Isabel de Valois, is that this is actually an out of period painting. It's 1605, so it was done well after her death. Um, some suggestions are that it was copying an original. And if that's the case, there's quite a lot that we can actually take from this portrait. Again, it's drawn back softly, the hair is drawn back softly from her face. You can see the natural curl in her hair right there. Um, they are clearly working with her hairstyle, which is, you know, brilliant to see. We've got a pearled net of some description that is clearly over top of crossed plaits. And we have that jewel again or at least one very similar to it, dependent off that particular net. Um, we have a hat, black velvet with a small brim, adorned with copious quantities of pearls, jewels, and feathers. So this here harks back to the hairstyle that we would expect to see from that period, rather than the later period, um, highly padded mountain hair, as I tend to think of it. Right, um, there is one last one that is almost contemporary to that last picture, and you can see where the fashions have gone. Um, again, the hair is drawn back softly from the face, but there is that wee centre front curl just on the forehead. And then the bulk of the hair is in a plait that is quite clearly off centre. It's adorned with um, rosettes, what looks like it might be a very sparse coronet of some description, and a number of ouches put in here. There is also a brooch just um, above the ear. So it is similar to the earlier period styles, but you can see there is a distinct twist to it. Right. Um, that is the end of the first section. Which questions do we have? Shinjo, do you want to read out any of the questions? And I'll see if I can answer them. Nope. Hold on, what can I do? Did they use hat? Oh, here we go. I think I've got access. Um, can this work for males also? I don't know. Um, oh, a friend made that dress. Awesome. I tend to assume that if a net, um, is worn, it is generally intended to cover the back of the head. You don't see much that indicates it just goes over crossed plaits. They do tend to be somewhat more all-encompassing all than that. Um, 
would the calls usually be close in colour to the hair or would there be more of a contrast? That's the thing. Um, I'm very much limited to the portraiture of the period. And from what I can see, it's hard to tell if there's a call there. So that would suggest that they would be quite close to the hair. But then again, the angles that we see on some of the portraits, hard to know. Taped hair? Absolutely, but I tend to think of it more as sewn here, unless I actually want to see the tapes. Oh, the bow. Yes, um, it could well be. Particularly if it's one of those situations where you plait the ribbon into the um, plait itself, or the braid, and then you loop that around the head and then tie the bow together to hold the plaits in place. Um, if that works for you, brilliant. Um, if you're like me and that just falls off either the front or the back of your head, um, you may need to resort to sewing a little bit more. Did they use hat pins? Um, I assume so. Um, I struggle to keep my hat on without pinning it to my hair. Um, really with lots of back combing. <laughs> um, back combing is fantastic and I have used it in the past but due to the fact my hair is down to my knees now I try to avoid it as much as possible because that is a pig to try and comb out afterwards. Oh sorry Sinjo, uh, I'll have to figure out how to do that. Oh, uh, from Lady Krista about how do you get softness around your face? Um, that is something that requires curly hair, to be honest. If you've got dead straight hair like me and you drag it back, it's just going to lie flat against your scalp and look flat. Unless you go for these delightful little padded bunny ears like I have at the moment. Well, cat ears maybe. Um, if you've got natural volume to your hair, it is possible just to um, to lay it back gently without putting any strain on it. Uh, sometimes that may mean putting the rest of your hair into the uh, the plait or the bunny uh, the ponytail to start with, and then gently layering your hair over the top. But that's not my area of expertise. As I said, my hair is dead straight and kind of lifeless. How would they have kept the small hats on? I assume pins hair dyes were used. There are comments about hair dyes and there are certainly recipes um, in a number of period resources but they're mostly aimed at lightening hair. Things like vinegar rinses and then putting it out in the sun. Um, the shapes of the small black hats similar to those in England. Uh, they're a slightly different shape. Um, this is my one. Uh, I'm not currently up to date with what's in the Tudor Taylor. It's been a long time since I've read that, I'm afraid. You'll be showing us how to add ribbons. Uh, I won't be showing that particular method, the tying it to your head, because it doesn't work for me. Um, you, all you would get is a long shot of me swearing at it as it fell off my head in various directions. Um, so what I'll do is I'll carry on now and we'll start looking at the next section. What have I done? Right, so here we go, recreating elements of the styles. My advice if you want to do period hair styling is figure out what kind of hair you've got and look for examples and portraits. Once you know what your hair is capable of and how that hair was treated in period, you've got a much better chance of recreating a period style hairdo that is, if you're not a hairdresser, within your skill range, your patience. Um, everything that I'm covering today is things that work for my hair, and I'm sorry for people with curls, but I have no experience with them. And when I've tried to put curls in my hair, they've mostly just fallen out. Um, even perms at this point. So um, it's certainly something that we could look at developing because I've certainly got ladies, friends with uh, lovely curly hair that they might let me practice on them going forward. 
Right, uh, this here is my period hair kit. Um, I use this when I am camping or when I've got plenty of time to prepare for an event. Um, and there you can see we've got combs, um, two different types, uh, a wee brush sitting next to the candle. Uh, we've got needles and thread, snips, um, the grave wire or the hair sticks. And we've got a selection of um, padding and fake hair. There is also a small tin of um, pomade down by the snips. What you can't see in there are my absolute favourite got to do my hair in an emergency oversized earpins. Hold on, let's grab them. These. Uh, there are museum finds of pins like this dating back to at least the 14th century. They're not always curved like this, but this is what I could find to buy. Uh, two of these will put my hair up into a bun and last all day if I'm really running out of time. Um, the other thing I haven't included here are my pins, my florist pins that I use to pin the hat to my head or the slightly smaller ones I will use to pin uh, individual jewels to my hairstyle. Um, there are a number of techniques that I use to secure um, my hair. The first one is tying off a plait or a braid um, using thread rather than an elastic band. And it's there's a bit of a knack to it so that the thread doesn't actually slide off the end of the plait. Um, it involves plaiting it in slightly further up from where you want it to end. That will be included in the video at the end if we have time to get to it. Um, there's also a wee bit on hair sewing. Uh, you can see a brief screen grab there of me using my plastic needle. Um, one day I will get a nice nail binding needle um, of bone or something fun that um, won't scrape my head like my metal ones do. Now the cool thing about hair sewing is that it is virtually impossible. You simply can't see it unless you're right there. Uh, this is my modern hairdressing kit. Um, I use this when I have very limited time to repair. For example, court is a little closer than I thought. Or when things have gone very, very badly repeatedly like they did yesterday. Um, I've got modern shampoos, a dry, shamp a dry shampoo and modern um, hairspray. The dry shampoo is great for adding a little bit of grip and body to your hair if it is just sliding out of what you want it to be in. Um, it helps get these little things to sit uh, without your hair just going off the bottom of it. Uh, traditional modi modern bobby pins, hair pins, elastics, combs, sleeper nets. Um, I haven't got my modern brush in there and you can't see the bump bits, but they will pop up later in the video. Oh, added temple rolls. Um, there you can see it half done, me trying to get one side working. This is again in the video. So that will cover how to make a, a padded temple roll, um, a la Anne of Austria. Um, we will also look at briefly wrapping a plait in both, well, I'll look at it in terms of pearls, but it can also be done in terms of ribbons. There is a wonderful, um, just out of period painting. Um, and Caballero de Santiago y su esposa, that's attributed to, what's his name, Luis Tristan, um, that shows a lady with beautifully matched hair sewing or hair taping um, ribbons on her cross plaits. That's just, it's geometric in its perfection, it's lovely. So we will briefly cover an easy way to do that. And then we're also going to look at taking a hairstyle from camp to court. So sometimes you get less warning than you might like before court. Um, for example, the day we were all lounging in the waterhole when the Camp Herald came through and gave us the wonderful announcement that there was 30 minutes before court and was immediately followed by the court herald yelling from the main pavilion that court was going to start in five minutes. The poor guy going around the site had forgotten to adjust for time as he walked the entire campsite. 
Needless to say, we were scrambling to get dry, dressed, and to court on time. Since that scarring incident, um, I have always looked for ways to bling up my everyday clothing so that it would be suitable for heading to court. And over the years, I've used a variety of tools. I mean, the easiest way to do that is, of course, a coronet if you're entitled to one. But if that's not an option, um, using hair pieces, particularly if you have pre dueled them, so sewing your pearls onto something like this, which is my next rainy day um, project, or even filaments, for which I tend to use whichever necklace I don't intend to wear. Um, you could also have a dueled net or a call that you just pop over the back of your hair. And then there are, of course, the wonderful Spanish velvet hats and the somewhat Portuguese tocas, or the veil that sits over here and then comes round through the neck. Of course, um, making a transition to court depends on having a base hairstyle that is adaptable. Um, these two pictures are from out of period, but they both show women in a working environment. The first one, she is clearly a lady of the nobility based on the number of pearls in her hair and the um, gorgeous lace and uh, the working around the edge of her collar. And because she is bathing the baby Jesus, there is going to be um, an allegorical layer to this. But you can see that even for doing a mundane but important task, um, she has got her hair dressed. So I take that as an excuse to wear pearls every day if I can possibly get away with it. The lady on the right, however, you can see that there are crossed plaits or looped plaits um, in a large bun, which is a shape that allows um, containment within a call or um, adding jewels to quite easily. Right. So when I take my hairstyles from camp to court, I usually either have a very, very large bun roughly here on my head, or I have this kind of look with the cross plaits. I don't always have these pads. These are a new look that I'm trying out. And I've found that these hairstyles can be really easily transformed just by adding two items from my jewellery box normally. Um, they, that will be shown in the video as well. Um, so here it is. Uh, Uh, yes. So at this point, um, I know that trying to play a video through the Zoom connection causes some funky bandwidth issues. Uh, well, what I I'm the, going to. So I have the video ready, actually. If oh. you if you um put me back as host, and um, I can share my own screen. Excellent. Let's try that then. Uh, do to do, do, do participants. I just had, did have one question. Um, yes. How did you get those large hairpins? No, where did you get large hairpins? Um, AliExpress. <laughs> um, I've been importing them in huge quantities and selling them at local SCA events. So, if you're not in New Zealand, AliExpress. You can't generally buy them less than groups of 20, so okay. you'll be popular with a lot of people. So I'll just share my screen and... Right, so here you can see me um, using a gravoir or hair stick, just using it to part my hair. And comb it out. I'm trying to get it nice and smooth. 
So that is actually a horn comb that I'm using there. Now I've got some of my wool padding. So that's just a chunk of lamb's wool that I purchased from a um, local craft shop. And I am using modern tiny bun pins to pin it to my head. Now the unfortunate situation is here, at some point in the preceding 20 minutes, uh, my cat stole the other one. I don't know where it is. So, so I have a matched pair of uh, rolls. I'm resorting to my modern bump clip. As you can see, it just clips in place. So now I'm sectioning my hair. Um, I find that holding wax doesn't really hold the ends so well. You need to tie it as well. But absolutely, for hiding ends, wax away. So in this case, I am using bobby pins because I've not had any success sewing this in place yet. It's a skill set I'm still developing. So again, it's a matter of small section of hair, smooth it with your reproduction renaissance hair brush, smooth it over your padding, and clip it in place. All right, and another one just to make sure. And then the last little bit doesn't actually have any padding to go over, so you just kind of loop it so it scoops in under the padding. Then you grab your comb again and you comb gently to fill in any gaps that you might have and if you feel so inclined spray liberally with hairspray at this point. If your hair is a little unwashed you won't need to, it'll stay beautifully. So at this point I've let the head and done a chunk of plaiting but I want to tie it off and I'm going to use a piece of um, crochet thread actually, it matches my hair. So I'm laying it across the back of the plait so that the ends fall into only two of the strands of my plait. And I just start plaiting. And you just keep plaiting until you've got probably four maybe five centimeters worth of plaited string. Bring them out of your hair. Loop one of them around the end several times. And then just well a half hitch in a bow really. Done. Um, because I've got these bobby pins sitting there, I'm never particularly happy having something that's that anachronistic going in my hair. So I'm going to take a leaf out of the Infanta's hair, um, hairstyle book and hide them. As you can see, my hair is long enough to go well over the top of my head and still have plenty of length left over. Just arrange your plaits so that you can sit them actually on the spikes from your bobby pins to help hold them in place and voila! No pins to be seen. Or buy yourself a plaited headband and sit that in place. Does the same thing with far less effort. Right, so at this point I've plaited the bulk of my hair and I'm going to start decorating it. So I've got a long strand of pearls and I'm just slipping a modern bun pin, one pearl from the end and I'm going to anchor that into the very base of my plait. You can see there's quite a bit of play in my strand of pearls. That means that there's enough um, give in the strands that they can be wrapped quite tightly without getting that, that springiness that um, tries to stop it from curling around your hair. 
So it's just a matter of wrapping and wrapping and wrapping some more until you've got the length that you want. And then laying that where you want it on your head. So then I would sew that in place so that it doesn't move. And this is sewing. I'm using a plastic tapestry needle because it has got a wee bit of bend to it and it doesn't have any really sharp edges like a lot of the metal ones that I tend to use. To secure this, you just want to make a tiny loop in the end. There you go, tiny loop just in the end. Right, so wrap the first plait over. Oh, it's not quite working. <laughs> right, because of the directions I plaited these, they had a distinct way they wanted to sit. So as you can see, I'm just trying to wrap them around the point in my head where the weight is going to go straight down my spine. If they sit too far back, you find your chin is constantly being pulled up as your head's pulled down. And if you put them too far forward, it's the other way. You tend to look like you're nodding off because the weight gets quite tiring after a while. Um, that wee clip is in place of having any decent maids or um, ladies' maids or servants to do my hair for me or hold it. Just stops things falling around while I get the business of sewing. So in this case, you just want to stab through a really small piece of hair and then put your needle through your loop that you created and pull it tight. Now your sewing thread is anchored to your hair. And just by manipulating that, you can actually hide it where nobody will ever see it. So you want to come out from the plait, catch a piece of hair in the plait, uh, sorry, on your head, and push it through to the other side. Um, each time you are going to try and catch plait and hair on your head, every time you go through. See, it only takes a couple of stitches and things are secure enough that you can take away the, uh, the clip. Now, I was feeling uh, particularly lazy yesterday and I didn't sew the whole way around like I normally do. I only sewed the top edges and it held as securely as anything I've ever done. So that was a nice discovery. Um, as for taking them out, it's surprisingly easy. All you have to do is feel around for um, thread and then cut it and then just give your hairstyle a wee tug at that point and you start to find where the rest of the sewing threads are and you just pull them out. Um, I've done it completely in the dark and I've done it after consuming a little bit too much wine as well so um, and I haven't cut my hair off yet. So there you can see we've got quite a secure hairstyle where you can't see any major mundane um, items. So at this point, yep, we've got the hairdo. Let's add some filaments. So this is a cheap hairband I bought years ago and ripped the um, elastic off. I just put um, a hairpin through either end, lay it where I want it to go, and stab the pins into some part of my hairstyle. nice and secure. It's not quite enough though really. So here is my favourite necklace <laughs> using ouches from Trilly Hats and a number of oversized pearls and filigree glass beads. I'm just threading a pin again through the parrot clip I used to fasten it. And the other time through um, a jump ring and then I'm just pinning the safety chain 
up out of the middle. So that's added a bit of weight to the hairstyle, but you know, there's always room for more as far as I'm concerned. Um, I could put a brooch on or a different brooch, but that one clashes. Just, well, there's me looking smug. What am I looking for? Ah, hat, yes. When in doubt and you want to assert your Spanishness, pull out a small jeweled velvet gora adorned with feathers and you are good to go. So there we have um, my class on Spanish hairstyling and adornment. Oh, uh, sorry, the Infanta's hairstyle, that was just me um, referring back to that hairstyle we looked at earlier that had the twisted plaits behind her roll. Um, were there any other questions there? Uh, a few people were asking about the Infanta's hairstyle book. Yeah, it's not so much a book, it's just... Um, it's just based on her portraits or the portraits I've seen of hair styling tricks. Um, is, um, using... how hard... No, 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 Sorry? you go. Sorry, I thought you were finished. You go, you keep going. Uh, I'm just looking for ways to hide the mundanities in my hair styling, basically. If I can use a period feature to do that, then that's what I'm looking to do. Um, someone, Lady Christina from North Shield, how hard is her hair sewing to take the thread out? Really easy. Um, you just pull until you find a thread, then you pull it out just a little bit, grab a pair of scissors or snips, just give it a snip, and then you can tug your hair from that point and you will find where those stitches are so you can just pull them out individually. Occasionally you will get to a point where if you've sewn around three or four times that everything gets confused at which point just a few more snips and it will release itself quite quite readily. Um, another question, uh, have you ever used natural sponges for smoothing hair? No, I tend to just use my Renaissance brush or um, a fine comb, the kind that we usually refer to as a knit comb these days, but really it's just a grooming comb, or my hair. It's, I'm good for doing that, because if it is, I will totally add it to my selection of things to do. Yeah, yeah um, uh, Juan Isabella has a question. I'd like to know this too. Where did you get that brush? <laughs> Great secret. Um, Actually, it's a dish scrubbing brush from Kmart. <laughs> but it's exactly the shape of the ones you see in the, Span uh, in the um, Italian Renaissance portraits. So I thought, oh, you know, it's $3. I'll give it a go. And it has been just an amazing tool. It's not boar bristle. It's, it's definitely natural of some sort. Um, and it's probably a little bit hard. But it just does such a wonderful job. It's awesome. Highly recommend them. Um, was it with a fine comb? How long is it to comb your hair? 12 minutes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, um, I have a... Sorry, you go. Um, I, if I'm not doing a, a cleaning comb, I can unplait my hair, detangle it, comb it through so with with this and replant it again in 12 minutes which is vital for school um and i have one question before we go um for padding um saving rats from your hairbrush is that one method to get padding yes i have a wad of hair that um i keep meaning to turn into rats but i keep getting distracted by shiny clothes and jewelry um it is absolutely a great option for this because it will always match your hair perfectly and even if you do end up with little gaps in your your rolls for example you won't be able to tell because it's just going to match what's in there and you do you put those in a hairnet 
Oh, um, no, they make something. No, 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 the, the rats, because that's the method oh, I heard. You get your hair, and you can certainly put it into a hairnet, but you can also felt it. It takes quite a bit of work, and um, anybody who's ever seen dreadlocks, it is effectively felted hair. So um, you can create a shape that is the crescent that you see quite clearly on um, Anne of Austria's hair, and felt that to shape. That's my next hairdressing tool, really. Oh, and we have one more question. Um, I was wondering, uh, can this work for males as well? If you want this kind of hairstyle, go for it. Um, I haven't really looked at men's hairstyles from the era, um, but I can't imagine that their hair care was significantly different for women, although it doesn't really take much to wash short hair to get the long hair. But certainly combing can do a lot to maintain scalp health and get rid of grime and, and gunge from your hair. And uh, Iberia, she's asked um, if you could provide a list of sources for the hair accessories and things that you've oh. shown. Um, that's going to be a little bit tricky because a lot of these things have been purchased over the last 25 years. Um, I can certainly put up what I can remember or at least get some photos up so that you know what you're looking for. I might put okay. that up on the web page because it might take a wee while. Okay, um, I think we'll finish it there and thank you, Isabel. I'll just